seismology is the study of stars other than the sun using their pulsation frequency. So all stars seem to pulsate. And the manner in which they pulsate reflects what's happening inside the star. So helioseismology is the study of pulsations of the sun. Astroseismology is just a fancy name for study of pulsations of other stars. We can't observe the surface of the other stars. The data, too, are much less abundant than compared to solar data. So that's why we still use two different terms, one for the sun and one for other stars. Also the fact that the sun is in the daytime, the other stars at night. But, but it's just the term to say seismology of, other star, of stars. So astero seismology. We know a lot about the sun. Uh, it's our nearest star after all, so we know what it's made of, we know roughly what it looks like inside, how it rotates. But the biggest mystery we have about the sun is its magnetic field. Uh, the sun has this 11-year solar cycle where the magnetic field increases and then decreases. And at the maximum of the solar cycle, you have enormous releases of energy and charged particles which can affect the Earth and we still quite don't know how to explain that phenomenon. So that's the big mystery. The sun is believed to have more than one solar cycle. The 11-year solar cycle is the most well-known because you see the sunspots rise and fall. But there's another well-established cycle, which is the 22-year cycle, because at each 11-year cycle, the magnetic poles of the sun shift. So if you had North Pole on top and South Pole at the bottom, then at the, ma the maximum, the North Pole would go at the bottom and the South Pole would go on top. And during the next maximum, it would revert back again. So that's a 22-year cycle. That is well known. It's usually referred to as the Hale cycle. Now, if you look at historic data of sunspots, which goes back to a few hundred years, you might be able to see a few other cycles. For example, uh, there seems to be something like an 80-something year cycle, which is known as the Gleisberg cycle. Others have said there may be slightly longer cycles too. But given that we don't have too much data, I mean, scientific data haven't been available for too long, it's a bit difficult to say. So yes, we know about the 11 year, about the 22 year, maybe the 80 year, Anything more? Well, perhaps, but it depends on how you interpret the data. Oh, other stars definitely have cycles. I mean, the sun is nothing special in that sense. Most solar type stars uh, that have magnetic fields seem to show cycles. In fact, there's been a reasonably long history of trying to determine cycles in other stars. In fact, recently my collaborators and I, it was, a, 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 it was an effort led by Travis Metcalf of the High Altitude Observatory, we discovered a star with the shortest known cycle. This is a star called Iota Horologiae. It has, we, uh, we found a cycle of about 1.6 years. So think of that, the sun has 11 years, this is just 1.6 years. So that's a small cycle, we still don't know how to explain it but it probably means that the star is very young. But uh, it's interesting. So we're seeing cycles of different lengths. So not all stars have an 11-year cycle. Some have a longer cycle. Some have a much shorter cycle. I attended this winter school in 1994. It was a school on helioseismology. Helioseismology at that time was at a unique threshold. We had very little data before that, and we knew the amount of data would increase many, many fold because two missions were coming, were beginning to give their data, or rather were going to give their data. So that was the beginning of a very productive era for helioseismology. And I was indeed lucky to be a part of that program. Uh, anything you did was new. And in that sense, the students of the current winter school are also in a good position. This is a new era for astroseismology. We are just beginning to get the type of data we had hoped to get for a very, very long time. And this is the same 
threshold for uh, astroseismology that we had for helioseismology back in 1994. It's a really good time to be an astroseismologist.